Welcome to the Digital Marketing Show on GSB TV, our weekly webcast series providing advice for small business owners and entrepreneurs. Uh, this week, we are talking about Google Analytics. Uh, I'm Edwin Bevins, our writer and editor, and this is Ed Fox, our webmaster developer extraordinaire. Uh, so, Ed, let's just jump right in. Tell me, what do I need to know, just the bare basics about Google Analytics to start off? Well, let's start off. Google Analytics essentially is a web service provided by Google um, to help you track and, and analyze uh, your website traffic. Understanding Google Analytics, what goes into it, and the data that it's going to provide you will give you insights to understand the overall performance of your website and where it can be improved and, and where you're doing really well. So where do people go to get Google Analytics first off? That's what sure. they need to know. Yeah, Google Analytics, it's a completely free service. Um, all you need to do is simply go to google.com forward slash analytics. Once you get there, you're going to be asked to create an account if you don't already have one. If you do, you'll just be asked to log in. Once you get there, go ahead and create your property. Your property is essentially just your website. You'll plug in a name for your website. You'll plug in the overall URL. A couple other minor settings. Once you get done with that, it's going to pop out what's called a tracking script. This tracking script is what needs to be implemented on your website. It's the code that will actually receive the data from your users, from your visitors, from your website, and provide that to Google. Um, it's actually a fairly simple thing to implement on your website. Um, if you're a developer or you have a, a basic HTML website, you'll need to hard code that script into the, the website template. But for most users, you're going to be using a CMS or a content management system. Something like WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, and amongst many of others. There are easy plugins that you can install, and quite a few of them have settings pages where you just simply plug in your unique tracking ID, hit save, and it'll implement it across the site. A really, really good example, or for those of you who have built your website with the Go Small Biz website builder, if you go into the admin and kick, click Google Analytics, you'll plug in that little code right there, hit save, and you are all done, good to go. There you go. And so once you get into your Google Analytics, there's really a lot going on in there. I mean, there's so many different kinds of things that it can do. It can be a little overwhelming, really, if you don't know what you're looking at or looking for, necessarily. So I think we want to spend some time looking at some of the most important data points that people should be tracking in their Google Analytics. You know, there's so many things they should be looking at. Here's where to start. Um, so let's first talk about some of the things you can talk about for measuring your audience, you know, and, and where they're from, for example. Absolutely. Yeah, there, the location is, is one of the main areas of, of audience. As you said, there are so many different aspects. There are eight large categories within the audience, but location is so, so very, very important. The location will tell you exactly where your visitors are coming from, whether that's Orlando, Florida, Buckhead, Georgia, even Bangalore, India. Um, you know, what you can do with this varies, um, but a really good example, if you have a business and you only do, you only provide your services in a localized area of your state, um, and you notice that you're getting a lot of web traffic from outside of your state, outside of this country. You can work to rearrange or adjust your metadata, your meta descriptions and tags, to add in your city, your location, your state, to hopefully increase the search traffic from within your state so that you can generate users that you can actually service. Right, so in a way, you're, you're measuring whether your advertising is actually getting the right people that you actually want to go to your website, to be coming to your website. Um, the next one we want to look at is the bounce rate. So tell me about the bounce rate. Yeah, bounce rates are, it, it's a very cool thing. What a bounce rate is going to do is it's going to tell you how well your homepage is performing. So to explain what a bounce rate is, is when a user comes to your website and lands on your homepage, if they have zero interactions with your website, meaning they don't click a call to action, they don't fill out a contact form, they don't navigate to any other pages, and they simply leave your website, that's considered a bounce. Um, what this will help you to do is understand where you're faulting on your website, on your homepage. 
Maybe the user just isn't interested in your service. Maybe the content on your homepage doesn't provide them with enough information for them to be interested in moving throughout the rest of your site. You could also have usability issues. Maybe your website homepage is taking too long to load. Maybe people can't scroll. Maybe your navigation's broken and they simply can't go to other pages. Um, there are other areas, uh, you know, maybe they're not provided with a clear path to move forward. If they land on your website and you're providing a particular product or service and they're really, really interested in finding out what the features are of your service, but there's no features button anywhere, they can't find it, they're going to get agitated and move on. Yeah. All right, one last thing we want to talk about under the audience really is about the technology they're using. You know, it can distinguish what kind of browser and operating system people are using, what kind of device they're using. How, is that, how does that matter? Yeah, so uh, this can be e extremely useful in many different ways. As, as Edwin said, it's going to tell you uh, what browser your user is coming from, whether that's a, a Safari, a Firefox, a Chrome, an Internet Explorer. Um, it, a lot of people don't know this that aren't developers, is that your website will render differently depending on what browser your users are using. So for, to, to use an example, if you have a very high bounce rate on your homepage and you look at the technology and you notice that the majority of these bounces are coming from users using Safari, for instance, um, you'll want to go and visit and look at your website in Safari. If it looks bad or has issues, you'll need to address that to fix those problems. Yeah, so it's really finding out very specific problems that you might not notice just on your own ex personal experience. Exactly. So let's move on and talk a little bit about how you can measure traffic sources. So one thing it can tell you is direct traffic as opposed to referral traffic. So what's, uh, what's the difference there really, you know? Well, a direct traffic is going to be um, somebody that has come for back of alert, lack of a better term, directly to your site. They know who you are. They have your website bookmarked. They're a return customer, a return visitor. Um, they've been told your web address from somebody. They've heard it in a commercial maybe. They've gone straight to a browser, into the URL bar, typed out your web address and come straight to your website. Whereas a referral is going to be somebody who has clicked on a link somewhere throughout the internet to come to your website, whether that be an online publication. Maybe they saw your website in a Chamber of Commerce website, um, other areas like that. Right, and social media fits into that. You know, sure. if they might have saw a social post, click through, there's all kinds of different things, and you're finding out where people are finding you. You know, again, it's, it's again measuring your advertising to a certain degree. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's move on to talking a little bit about um, S the search engine keywords that people, you know, you can measure how people are searching for you, um, you know, if they're finding you by searching for your name or for, you know, f searching just for generic terms, you know, how does that matter? Well, y y you'll go to the keyword section and it will actually tell you all of the keywords that people are plugging into a Google search and uh, those keywords are what are actually bringing up your website. You can analyze that to find out um, if it's if the proper keywords are being used. What other keywords you can adjust? Um, you know, if they're searching for bakers, but you happen to be a photographer, you've got something wrong. Something's you need crossed. To work on. Absolutely. Yeah. So now let's talk about the ma last major topic we want to talk about today, which is just how Google Analytics can help you measure your content. And uh, I guess the first topic we want to talk about here is you can look at specific pages, uh, which pages people are looking at and what they're not looking at. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, it will show you all of your, your various landing pages. You can see uh, the pages that are being seen the most. You can see the pages that are not being utilized at all. And you can even tell what pages people are bailing on or leaving your website. That can help you to understand where you may need to have copy adjustments, where you may need to add additional content, or where you may even need to add what would be called something uh, like an exit intent pop-up, something that would draw the attention of the, the customer and bring them back into your site, especially if they're leaving on one particular page. That's right, and so one other thing with that is it also tells you how long people are looking at your web, at, a, at a particular page, so you know, you know which pages people are really getting spending a lot of time on and which ones they kind of look and 
immediately right. get away right. from. I, I don't want right. that. Get me right. out of here. Yeah. I mean, if somebody's spending too much time on your page, you may need to reduce the copy. They may not, you know, they may be reading too much. It may be taking them too long to understand what you're actually, the message you're trying to convey. Um, if they're not spending enough time, again, you may need to make some serious adjustments. Yeah. And then one last thing we want to hit uh, while we're here talking about Google Analytics, in-page analytics. Sure. Um, you know, there's things like where people are clicking, heat mapping, we'll talk about those. Yeah, so when you pull up your in-page analytics, it will actually show you all a, a screen of your website. You can go to your various pages and it will show you all of the little points on the page where people are clicking and give you the numbers and amounts that they are clicking. And you can take a look at that to see what people are interacting with the most. Most, uh, For example, if you look at your home page and the majority of the people are clicking on the search bar within your page, they have no idea what they are looking for or where to go what they're looking for. So they're going straight to the search to figure out you know, how, how to navigate through your site. So you would really need to make some adjustments. On right. So uh, this concludes our session today, just introducing just some of the things that Google <laughs> Analytics can do. There's so much more. Um, but hopefully this will help you, you know, feel free to get this, put it on your site. Like I said, it's free. This is a, a great tool that is used by a lot of different websites out there. Uh, we encourage you to, to try it and use it to improve your website and your marketing. Uh, tune in next week for our next session of GSB TV. On behalf of Ed and myself, have a great week.